Resident Evil 4 is Capcom's newest release on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, remaking or reimagining one of, if not the best game on the franchise, and doing so in grand style. This review will mainly focus on the PlayStation 5 build of the game, and I would like to thank Capcom USA for providing me this review copy. Building upon one of the most highly regarded action games of all time is a steep proposition since we've seen so many attempts tried and not quite hit the mark in the past few years. Thankfully, Capcom has RE2 and RE3 in their back pocket where they already did this progress two times before to varying levels of success, and RE4 Remake seems to learn from both the misses and the success stories of those projects. Enriching not just what made an action game with added over-the-top one-liners and cheesy dialogue at times better, but also letting you simmer in the dark brooding, dark, truly horror-quiet moments where dread and sheer terror might overtake you. That is to say that while RE4 stays true to most of the story and pacing aspects you saw in the original version, this remake adds so much more and it gives agency to those players who wish to delve deeper into unexplored passageways or houses with open windows. A real reason to expect them just to potentially find something you didn't know was previously hidden. The story mainly hasn't been touched and for good reason. Leon is sent to Europe on assignment to rescue Ashley, who just so happens to be the president's daughter. With little to go by other than a vague village location, off he goes only to find that in a typical Resident Evil fashion, the town folk referred to as Ganados have been afflicted with a disease that not only transformed them into unrecognizable creatures at times, but also just kind of makes them look like normal people with pink eye, which is a funny twist. As you progress through the story, many legacy characters are introduced and even more so are fleshed out where Ashley is a little bit more self-sufficient this time around, and Lewis is given more of a reason to be there. Simple things that enrich the story telling aspects of this entire remake production. One of the biggest core changes you'll see is how QTE or quick time events have been severely curtailed in this entry as opposed to the original game. One of the biggest criticisms, especially for players who didn't play the game when it originally launched, was an abundance of QTE moments, especially during melee encounters. I personally played RE4 on the Nintendo Switch just last year, and it was my first time playing it through to completion. I came away with the sense that the game maybe have been uh, a game of its time due to how many scenarios would just end on a simple button press. Thankfully, most of that has been addressed, but perhaps not fully correcting some of the issues or perhaps introducing entirely new ones. Simply put, resource management is now more primal than ever, to the point that it may feel even mandatory at times. Essentially, bullets are more scarce than ever, and using environmental ways to do damage and using your trusty knife are now just more important, which is all well and good. The problem is that if you don't stick your shots and keep kills flowing with the least amount of ammo spent, you'll eventually have to rely on these tactics as the main means to finish off a grueling encounter. There will be times you have an onslaught of enemies coming at you and you need to keep moving while also utilizing every tool at your disposal to scrape by. This means that the game has a little bit less horror focus at moments and more full on action like a traditional third person game. That's not to say quiet and dreary moments cannot be found, but after all things are clicking, it can feel like a little bit much for the uninitiated. Another quick criticism that can be levied to the fact that mercenaries will be released at a later date. This is a feature in a game mode that often comes hand in hand with the mainline Resident Evil games and is being dropped towards the future. And it does make me wonder why they didn't really have it ready for launch or just simply just didn't care to do so. Post game options also have you buying costumes and items, but that's kind of expected and they don't really add much to the story. 
As a casual Resident Evil fan and not a full on diehard, I can see just the amount of love and care that has been put onto this remake. It does subvert the expectations and twist enough in certain encounters that will keep legacy fans guessing, while also giving more than enough nods to what most people want, which is to say the best Resident Evil game in the series improved in just about every single way. Nintendo Sphere gives Resident Evil 4 on the PlayStation 5 an 8.5 out of 10. If you're brand new to my channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, hit the bell to receive notifications when the videos grow up, and as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya!